Hello everyone and welcome back to my Soul System Colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. The events in this episode occurred during the live stream on July 20th and the first thing was to manage my Europa probe approaching Jupiter. And here you see me trying to figure out the plot uh, to match orbits with Europa. Now you don't want to get close to Jupiter because then you're going to have to boost your periapsis back up again to match Europa. Uh, it's only good to get into, uh, get close to Jupiter if you're just trying to make orbit around Jupiter. If you're trying to make orbit around one of the moons, then you're going to want to actually match the orbit of the moon right away. And so here I am trying to figure out how much delta V I need. There is a locked tank. I didn't realize that initially when I uh, started streaming, but then I figured out that I had a locked tank to use. So I have more delta V than is displayed right there. And so it'll take about 5,400 to actually do the initial burn at Jupiter and then another 2,000 or so to get into orbit around Europa, less than 2,000. Now this is another probe, this is the Rock Candy Mountain probe and this is going to be headed for Saturn but it was it's going to take a slingshot around Jupiter to get there and so it was launched at the same time as the Europa probe and aimed at Jupiter. So it is now making an inclination correction as you can see and that will bring it closer to Jupiter and then we'll have to make sure that the approach is very fine-tuned because every tiny little bit of deviation at Jupiter makes a huge different difference at Saturn. And you can see that here. Uh, notice how big a difference it is when I do a 0.1 meter per second change to this approach at Saturn. And that is because of the outsized influence of Jupiter. And so, trying to be very careful here. We already have another a Saturn mission on its way. Now the main event for this episode is the Mars missions getting into Mars SOI, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. But uh, here you can see me figuring out how much it's going to take to get into orbit around Saturn, making sure we have that. This too has a locked tank that is not visible in the Delta V readout down there. But uh, <laughs> it's not really easy to get... Uh, precise approach to Saturn like this so I just end up having to take what I can get and then we'll have to fine-tune it after we pass Jupiter. Uh, certainly we don't want to crash course in this case uh, I think I go with that one right there. Okay and of course after you do that uh, checking the approach to Saturn you also need to make sure you're not accidentally crashing into Jupiter or anything and so there we are. Alright so now we are back with the Europa probe and I'm igniting the engines to get into orbit around Jupiter and matching the orbit with Europa. Uh, slightly. Uh, it'll be a little bit off so that we eventually hit Europa. And you'll note the missized engines. That's because of the change in versions from 1.0.4 to 1.1.2. And so the SSTU parts reset their mounts. And so that's why that stage looked so weird. Anyway, this is a methane oxygen engine, and some of the oxygen boiled off along the way. Uh, quite a chunk of it, actually. And so that's why there's an imbalance between methane and oxygen. Technically, the methane should have boiled off as well, so I have no idea what happened there. But uh, we also have storable fuels, and probably for future missions to uh, Jupiter, we should focus on storable fuels, unless there's some way of time warping through ion engine burns, which would be even better. If we could do long ion engine burns, that would be great. Okay, fine-tuning the final result, and we see we have an encounter with Europa building there. But we are through this stage. I have to pump the strobo fuels down for the RCS to stabilize the thing, and I'm going to pump that fuel back up. Now, thankfully, the RCS system on the methane stage used the same fuel as the probe itself does, so that's handy. Okay, so decouple. And now we'll finish off the burn and get our encounter with Europa. Here we go. And there it is. And you can see how close to the orbit of Europa we already are. That will minimize how much of a burn we need to do at Europa in order to get into orbit around it. And I think it was even better than probably before. It's only a thousand. It's only a thousand twenty-six meters per second. So that's excellent and then we will have a permanent Europa probe. You can see that it's running on RTGs, so in theory it would work as long as the RTGs were working. And 
there we go, our Europa probe. And it has to be emphasized that this has taken a, a few months to get here because we were conducting other missions along the way uh, with the solar system colonization save. It's taking a long time. Of course, it's not the real multi-year missions that we would have in real life, but uh, viewers have had to wait a few months for this thing to arrive, so it's quite a thing. Okay, the next thing we have here is one of our Mars missions. This is the Mars Ascent Vehicle. Uh, that's in the middle, and then you have a heat shield, uh, maneuvering stage, and then at the top you see a uh, capsule where uh, Jebediah is, and also his food supply. Um, this is uh, The capsule and food supply are sort of a backup situation, uh, just in case other things didn't work out. But here we are fine-tuning our approach to Mars, and of course this is going to have to aero break. But we will, we will deal with that once it gets in. It'll be one of the later missions to actually arrive at Mars. While all this is going on, of course I have to take care of other crewed missions. The Earth Orbit Station does not have any crew on it. We brought the crew back down. And we also brought the crew of the return vehicle back down. But we still have this Lunar Station and Dimion Station with three crew members, including my Kerbal self here. And so we have to take care of them. And the thing I need to do here is to get rid of the old resupply vessel. You can tell it's old because of the misshapen engine cluster, and that's because of SSTU updating. And so I deorbited it and crashed it into the lunar surface. I didn't want to put it into like a graveyard orbit, somebody suggested putting it into a graveyard orbit. Uh, first of all, because of the misshapen mount, and because it'll clutter up the save in that case anyway. Better to just get rid of it. Now this is our first Mars mission to arrive, this is the Burroughs rover. And so it's just a tiny little rover that carries two Kerbals. And it will have to land at the location where everything else lands on the surface, so that's going to be important. So we want it to get into orbit. We do not want it to land right away. Otherwise it will be picking our landing spot for us. And I installed trajectories at the suggestion of viewers and viewers were very helpful in helping me figure out how to use it properly and it turned out to be very helpful because otherwise I would have had to do a lot of F5 and F9 in order to get the approach right uh, trying to figure out the right periapsis. Um, it suggested a periapsis of between 46 and 47 kilometers. Uh, there was a hitch though. Uh, something about this assembly is a little bit imbalance and so you know it'll be it's tilting away from retrograde and even though I'm having SAS try and hold retrograde it's not really doing that and the net result is that it's bringing our periapsis down as we pass through the atmosphere and even though it seems like we're getting close to the, uh, to the periapsis there we ultimately do not get close to the periapsis and it's coming straight down now I did uh, F5 before this because I want to make sure after the huge delay getting all these missions here, that things work out as best as possible. But, um, well, uh, I see whether it uh, would actually have survived. I do this test and turns out the parachutes were misconfigured. So important bit of data there before we F9 and reload. Might as well take advantage of figuring this out now. And uh, also, it looks like decoupling the heat shield at such high velocity is not a good idea. Not necessarily a given because uh, Martian atmosphere is very thin. Um, and that's something else to think about when it comes to configuring the parachutes. Is it uh, given what altitude and what speed we can actually deploy the parachutes given that Martian atmosphere is, you know, a hundredth that of Earth atmosphere? So it's a... Uh, it's, uh, Open question. Anyway, on the next pass, we still have the same problem. And so I decide to rotate the craft in order to reorient and actually tilt up. And so you'll see me doing that here. Uh, we do have a reaction wheel in the service module. Uh, the RCS ports are non-functional. They were misconfigured. They were configured for the incorrect fuel. And so the RCS ports are no good if you're wondering why you don't see them firing trying to maintain orientation. But thankfully I, I did put a reaction wheel in and so we were able to turn around and that kept our periapsis from going down and allowed us to make a safe orbit. So there we go, the Burroughs rover, our first Mars payload to enter orbit. 
but we don't want it in such a high orbit, so I arrange to uh, do a burn at apoapsis to adjust and we'll go for another pass. Now this is a payload that was submitted to me by viewer Die Lord Brute, and this is uh, another iteration of his mod propaganda BMW Comsat, uh, his name, and there is a backstory. Uh, but here I am making its approach to Mars and making sure that it's going to be ready to do its orbital entry and adding alarm for that a little bit ahead of where it's going to meet the atmosphere. This is another viewer submitted payload. This is Blue Gill Broncos uh, LRMCR Long Range Mars Communication Relay. And this one is not going to go into the atmosphere. This is going to do a propulsive capture around Mars. And so I have to keep its its orbit high outside. Its periapsis has to be outside the atmosphere of Mars. And you see that there. And so we'll be using 2,000 or so meters per second of delta V in order to capture. This here is the Mars ISRU unit. And of course, we're going to have to land that close to everything else. Otherwise, we won't be able to refuel craft. And so I get on a 46 kilometer periapsis as well uh, because we want a stable orbit so that we can get everything down at the same place and trajectories will help with that. You'll note that we are watching the Apollo 11 EVA down in the corner there. Uh, at times I expanded that to the full screen to watch that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is in commemoration of Apollo 11. They did the EVA. Uh, technically UTC I think is July 21st, but uh, my time it was July 20th, so that's why I, I commemorated it on July 20th. Okay, here we are doing the burn for the Burroughs rover, trying to get it into a lower orbit, but still in orbit. This is yet another mission that we need to land. This is the Mars Habitat, and this one is going to get into a propulsive orbit. Instead of using a heat shield and going into the atmosphere, you can tell because it doesn't have a heat shield on it. And so I have to plot it with a high periapsis and check how much delta V is going to require. And it's not going to require that much. And so I'm hoping here that I don't need a heat shield to ultimately land it on the surface. That will be going slow enough through the thin Martian atmosphere that a heat shield will not be required as long as we do the propulsive capture. That's a good question. Anyway, here is the Burroughs rover making its second pass through the Martian atmosphere as we continue to watch the Apollo 11 EVA. And it turns out that it can't maintain orientation. The fuel tank at the top with the little thrusters is too heavy. And you see uh, one of the thrusters is a little bit misplaced too. It seems incorrectly attached. And it's sort of floating in the middle of nowhere. And that was probably leading to our tilt, possibly at any way. But uh, yeah, it turns out that even though it wasn't keeping balance and actually flipped over, it was all right. It wasn't uh, generating too much heat. But then again, we were in the thin part of the atmosphere. 56 kilometers is pretty thin in the Martian atmosphere. Okay, so uh, here I am lifting my orbit up to get the rover into a safe orbit so it won't pass through the atmosphere while we are dealing with our other missions. So there it goes. It is safely in orbit around Mars. And my other missions are on their way into Mars SOI with plots with the correct periapsis. And while watching the moon mission in the corner below, I decided to come up with a moon mission. And so this is, uh, you can tell it's a colonization module. And if you watch my colonization series, um, you will note that this is very similar to the base I delivered to, the, to Kerbin's moon recently in a recent episode. And I wanted to try and figure out how to deliver such a thing to Earth's moon. But this is resized. The, instead of being 2.5 meters, the main module is 4 meters. So everything is times uh, 1.6, which is normal scaling for a uh, real solar system. And so everything is scaled up, including the masses, are, is scaled proportionally, not, not one-dimensionally. It's uh, more than that. And so the whole assembly is actually 19 tons, which is much heavier than it was in the colonization series. And so to deliver a 19 ton payload to the moon, lunar surface, uh, I have to figure out how to do that and what kind of rocket we would use. I thought about just using Apollo hardware, but uh, I'll think about that 
in in a future episode. I didn't get done with the rocket in this one, but uh, you can look forward to that in a future episode as well. So we're making bigger plans even as our missions are just getting to where they've been going all this time. All right. So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.